Developed by Avro Canada in the 1950s, it was designed to be a very fast interceptor aircraft. It had no guns, and it only had missiles to intercept and shoot down enemy bombers or aircraft if needed. At the time of the aircraft's development, interceptor aircraft were seen as very useful, as they could shoot down bombers, a seemingly large threat during the Cold War. Pure, interceptor-only aircraft are now obsolete, as they are only good for shooting down bombers and flying fast, but at the time, this plane was very ahead of its time and amazing. It could fly almost Mach 2.0. This was the 1950s. The plane's development gave jobs to thousands of Canadian engineers, which were all lost when development was cancelled. The Avro Aero could very well have been the fastest plane in the world at the time. The plane would also have been the world's first fly-by-wire military aircraft that was actually flown and produced. In 1959, the Canadian Diefenbaker government cancelled the program, citing heightened costs for production, budget cuts, and increasing costs for Avro. This resulted in 25,000 indirect and direct job losses, and the loss of Canada becoming a hotspot for scientific development of similar things. The cost of the program was very high for a country like Canada, with not a ton of money to pour into it. Many believed that despite the greatness of the aircraft, the technology would be outdated quickly, and it was already getting outdated. Competition from McDonnell Douglas and other companies making other jets in America had more funding with larger companies and could pump planes out cheaper and faster. Prime Minister Diefenbaker was also known to dislike Avro's president, Crawford Gordon Jr., and this could have played a large role. Without a doubt, politics was heavily involved in the decision. This all being said, the Avro Arrow's cancellation was widely regarded as a betrayal of Canada's industry, as it would have greatly benefited the country overall, even if some negatives were attached. It was, and is, seen as a huge betrayal of the Canadian aviation industry. No planes were produced in factory, and only one replica exists today.